Okay, once again, it's one of those times when I kind of get a little bit twitchy in looking at the latest, newest, highest, most amazing cameras the Nikon D4S has come out and just kind of going, oh, maybe, 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 oh, if I saved up, should I go for it? Oh, how much better would certain things be? Um, and there's lots of different sites which you can check out for doing tests of uh, image quality which you get from the sensors. So uh, again, there's lots of things to think about whenever you're getting the camera, not just uh, it's how many megapixels, but it's dynamic range, it's tone, tonal range, it's ISO uh, range and performance. And you've also got things like it's ergonomics, it's buttons, it's ease of use, it's uh, Wi-Fi. You know, there's loads of things to think about whenever you're getting a camera. But for me, just now, I know what I need in a camera and I know what I like and uh, all that kind of stuff. And the camera which I'm still using nowadays is the Nikon D700. Uh, and usually, most often, it's with this lens, the Tamron 24-70 VC lens. Love it, love it, love it. Um, that was that. Ca this camera came out in 2008. This being 2014, that makes it a six-year-old camera, and in technology terms, that's pretty old. So I'm thinking, right, okay, these new, new big boys must be, must be the bomb compared to this one. And uh, the one thing which I love is uh, a clear images with when using fairly high ISO. So whenever I say a high ISO, I'm talking around about the 2000, 3200. I wouldn't really go up to about 6,400, uh, but certainly in weddings, there are certain times when I'll shoot this and I'll have it at uh, 3,200 and uh, and I'm just amazed by how clean the images come out of this. Um, but rarely I've ever needed the situation to go above 3,000. As uh, I've been up to 4,000, but I, I went through my uh, Lightroom cataloging and just said, what photos have I ever taken at higher than that ISO? And I haven't taken any, uh, which weren't just like test shots or accident shots. Um, but the new cameras that are coming out are having higher ISOs. And a lot of people are saying, well, that means they're going to be even better with having low noise at the lower ISOs. I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so that must be pretty good. One uh, website which I check out, which does uh, tests of both the sensors, it also does uh, uh, tests of lenses as well now, is DxO Mark. And they've got a whole bunch of... Uh, ways that they test it. So first of all, so this is where I was confused. I thought, right, I'll do my two old cameras, the Nikon D80, a camera which I had years and years back, and then the D700, and then the Nikon D4S. So uh, just to give you an idea of what all this is. So the first thing is the original ISO sensitivity, and you can see that it kind of follows this line. So this line is if the dot is perfectly on it, then when it says 1600 ISO, it is 1600 ISO. However, what you'll see is they're all slightly below and they're not giving you the exact ISO settings. So whenever, uh, for example, the orange mark is D4S, whenever that says 1600 ISO, in real terms, that's more around about the 1186 ISO. So they're very, very uh, detailed on that. And you've got the D80, which is actually the closest, with 1,400. So in other words, they know how bright an image should be for a certain ISO setting, and they're seeing that the setting which the cameras are set at is sometimes a little bit lower than what it's uh, indicating. And you'll see that in the Nikon D700 only went to ISO 200, uh, but the 80 and the 4S went all the way down to uh, 150. It didn't really go down to 50. So that's showing you that ISO isn't necessarily the same in every camera. Now the interesting one is sig sig SNR 18% signal to noise. Uh, so the signal is how much information it gets and the noise is just the gunk that comes along with it. So if you've got very high signal, so 43, uh, then that means there's pretty much no noise whatsoever. It's a clean image. It's smooth, it's sharp, you've got no problems with it at all. If you go all the way down to like 12, and that means there's so much noise coming through that uh, you can barely make the image out itself. And on this website, you can see you can see there's color luminance and uh, other types of noise coming through on the on the file. But this is where it's surprising. Okay, so the Nikon D80 uh, said it could go from ISO 100 up to ISO 3200. However, when it was saying 3200, is more like 2400. And it was pretty, pretty pump uh, uh, resolution, or lots of noise happening on there. So the more the line goes to the right, the cleaner, sharper, and better the image is. 
The odd thing is, uh, with this DxO Mark site, is that they, they do a thing about print, which I think is a, a comparison of like an 8 megapixel uh, image. So if you leave a little thing over the print button, it'll tell you what it means. And it's pretty much saying if it's uh, an image printed out at 8 megapixels. So in other words, if you've got a multi-million pixel image and you compress it into an 8 megapixel image, is going to be different than if you're doing it from, say, a 10 megapixel uh, image down to an 8. Um, so it's a bit of an odd one there. So I usually go by what it says by the screen, because that's what I'll be editing on, that's what I want to see my images on. And I usually go zoom in one to one. Now, this, this is where I'm kind of surprised about, because what I'm seeing here, the Nikon D700 is the dark, dark red, so it's above the D4S uh, at the low ISO setting, so 200, 400, and we'll say up, to, and then it becomes equal once it gets up to I, the 800 ISO or uh, indicated 800 ISO. So that means that's effectively meaning that the Nikon D700, an eight, uh, no, six-year-old camera, has cleaner images at its lowest ISO settings compared to the Nikon D4S, which kind of surprised about. Uh, and then this is just a surprising thing here is that they match each other all the way down until pretty much an indicated 6400 ISO which uh, again then it goes up so then the Nikon really dies off after that or the, the D700 dies off after that but the D4 does pretty well for a good while but it's still like I would say this is the cutoff line. I've put a little red marker here when it gets to 20 uh, decibels that is just saying that's it's pretty gash there so you don't really want to use it so I was gonna say yeah I could use around about the 12,000 ISO but uh, that'd be pretty rubbish but I would say both I would say are pretty good at the 1600 but here uh, at the 6400 but here it's just kind of like I don't really use them but what I really was expecting was the whole orange curve to be almost a full stop further along. So this is quite surprising to me. Um, and it's not really making me think, oh, I need to get a newer, bigger, more expensive, super high ISO, ISO camera. Because all it's really telling me is that it can do super high ISOs, but they're gash. Uh, and um, I would see no performance increase in the ranges which I would actually be using my camera. So that's just a little thing to be wary of and to look out for, is that although they're saying that they've got bigger, better, higher ISOs, check how much of an improvement you'd actually get in your working range, which is the more important area to look at. Anyway, that's my tip, hope that helps. Cheers, bye-bye. Okay, so just here's an example of uh, the what I mean by the noise uh, and the high ISO that you get in the cameras here. So with the Nikon D700, here we've got it at 1600 ISO and in Adobe Lightroom, which normally adds in a little bit of colour uh, noise reduction and luminance uh, reduction, I've taken that right down. So this is a raw file at its, at its worst, pretty much. And uh, at 1600 ISO, it's pretty clean. Oh, just to give you an idea, this is it zoomed in 1 to 2, or is it 2 to 1? One to two, uh, super zoomed in, beyond one to one on this 27 inch iMac. So if I, I focus on these folders away over here, and you can see them nice and clearly, no problem. So that's at 1600 ISO. Uh, if I go up to uh, 3200 ISO, so here there's a little bit more color noise coming in, and that I think is the easiest one to get rid of. Just gone absolutely perfect. If I then go to, this one is a shocker, 6400 ISO. So this is a setting which, if I'm sitting here, which is arm's length away from my computer on a 27 inch Mac, and that is, I'm guessing that's good, is larger than an A4 piece of paper that I'm seeing. That looks like a clean image, pretty much. And maybe I can see a little bit of noise in the back of this screen here, but that's just really like color noise. And if I were to zoom back out there, that looks like a clean image for maybe an A3 size image that I'm seeing from less than an arm's distance away. So that's where I think the Nikon D700 is amazing. Um, however, there is the high settings, which it just doesn't even tell you what it is. Oh yeah, 12,000, and it's a little bit brighter here, and a lot more noisy, a lot more like explosions of light going in. And if we go up to this stupid high, uh, 25,000, 
uh, is, is pretty mush. There's a good setting where if I, let's say I go from 3000 and that if I press C, thank you for somebody telling me that little button, and I click uh, just to zoom in uh, on the file. So here we've got left and right, uh, one is something, one is something else. Uh, looking without even uh, checking the files, I can easily see the one on the left is obviously the, high, the super high ISO being 25,000 and the other one being uh, 6,400. But however, let's just add a little bit of noise reduction. This is what I always think is that a lot of these files or settings are done on images, straight raw files. And the light, uh, the noise reduction you get in these softwares now is so good. So let's just, I'm gonna go add some uh, noise reduction. So what I would say is that pretty much uh, at the lowest one, at the 1600 ISO, all I would do is do a tiny little bit of color and maybe the tiniest amount of luminance, but I don't think anybody would ever see that. If we go up to 6400, let's look, have a little look here. I've brought the color up and that's instantly taken away the color noise and it's a little bit more grainy, uh, but it's not too bad. So if I would just bring the noise, if I bring it all the way up, it becomes mush. So you don't want to use it too much. You want a little bit of grain there. I'm only bringing that up to about 22, so that is still blimming good. Uh, and then if we go to this ridiculous one here, let's just bring it down to the, what is this, 25,000 ISO. Here's a picture I've got over there. And uh, if we bring in the color, so yeah, that takes out, it perfectly takes out the color noise. And if we do some lunens, mm, we're having to bring it up to around about 50 to get a little bit smooth, and it's becoming a little bit mush, but yeah, it kind of looks a little bit more like a painting uh, rather than, than a sharp photo, especially if you look around about the folders area. Oh, that looks that looks bad. In fact, me, oh, actually bringing the, the color noise up too high is the problem there. So if I bring that too low, as a mess. Just up a little bit, 20, good. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so it is much. You wouldn't want to use that. But uh, if you're just having a whole image like that compressed down, not bad.